like mental gymnastics, wild prescient moments, a reading experience that blurs the line of reality, take one of these novels for a spin. Shield's Ladder by Greg Egan. I've read more of Greg Egan's work over the last 10 years than that of any other author. It's for good reason. I find his work to be some of the most original and innovative in all of science fiction. It's also the most difficult to read. There's something to be said for the argument that books are an escape and shouldn't be a chore. With Egan, I find it's my own limitations and ignorance that make the reading at times difficult. If I have to read his book three times and have the thrilling experience in the third read, it's not an indictment of his inability to talk down to me. It's instead a journey that I willingly take I'm a better reader for the experience, and my emotions are so spiked during that final read because of all of the ideas that my mind now has grasped and opened up to. That's the best way that I can explain my elation reading Shield's Ladder. Shield's set 20,000 years in the future is, in one sense, a BDO or Big Dumb Object story, though the object is not just big and dumb, it's another sort of accidental universe that's expanding and devouring solar systems. Its size is unfathomable. Shields has great post-human characters and aliens. Many humans have decided to forgo bodies and they exist digitally. Common in Egan's writing are alien-feeling aliens. I'm not sure that anybody writes aliens better than Egan. If that alone is enough of a hook for you, I'll point you to this book or other Egan novels that I've recently loved, Incandescence and Dichronauts. The mind-bending over my head stuff is the quantum physics. Even understanding 40% of it, my reverence of the brilliant display is an emotion that I greatly appreciate in the reading experience. This is a five-star read, and I'm jealous of a person who's smarter than me who reads it, because if they understand all the inventive physics, and they get to enjoy the rest of the work as I did, they'll get to have their mind blown even more than I did. Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler, published in 1998. This is the sequel to Butler's phenomenal disturbing, captivating, and moving Parable of the Sower. This is the Nebula Award-winning second book in Butler's Earthseed trilogy. In Parable of the Sower, near-future California is struggling. An understatement? Climate, economic, and cultural disasters and tensions have come to a head, and the world is very dangerous. This is a dark and powerful survival story. 15-year-old Lauren loses her entire family, and on top of that, she's uncontrollably hyper-empathetic. She's heavily and disturbingly impacted by the suffering of others. Coping, responding, rising from and through this, Lauren develops a new religious movement centered on the idea, God is change. In Talents, the sequel, Lauren has risen through much of the despair of the first book. The religious movement called Earthseed has provided for peace, at least in her corner of California, then we get into the mind-boggling stuff. I won't spoil talents for you since it's a sequel, and I'm hoping that you'll take this as a recommendation to start this series with Parable of the Sower. The whole series has an eerie prescience, and at times will make your skin crawl with how much can be applied to our current world. Back to mind-blowing, nerve-tingling, chilly, scary. In talents, there is a political movement headlined by ultra-conservative presidential candidate Alex Steele Jarrett. Jarrett's slogan, make America great again. Properly chilled? This movement is bolstered by machine gun toting, show off fundamentalist Christians. This is the United States though, so people can agree to disagree. Oh no, they can't. If you don't share my worldview, I must destroy you. The purity of the country is at stake, after all. Echopraxia by Peter Watts. This is another sequel novel, and by now my agenda of recommending some great series to you should be very clear. I recently talked about book one of the Firefall series, Blind Sight, a novel that I enjoyed so greatly I ranked it at number nine on my top 210 science fiction books video, as well as talking about it on a few other episodes on my channel. Recommend a book to me and then tell me that it has vampires. I've now lost interest, it's just not my thing, so it should seem mind-blowing that I loved this series as much as I did. To be clear, that's not why this is on the mind-blowing list. In fairness, these are not your traditional fairyland vampires, these guys are genetically engineered. Where Blindsight was very much a deep dive examination into human consciousness, Echopraxia explores the biologic condition versus free will. And go ahead and throw in faith, groupthink, hive-mind musings as well. 
Line sight is set not too far future and features a first contact encounter and conflict with non-self-aware aliens from another star system. While Echopraxia continues some of the same philosophic ideas, what blows my mind is where the novel goes relative to the mind, the brain, neuroscience, human biology, post-humanism, bioengineering, and biotech. Blind Sight is the superior read, but Echopraxia delivers so many spellbinding ideas, and there is enough story and thrilling moments to make it worth your while. More points in favor of the Firefall series will echo what I said about Greg Egan. The series excels with aliens that feel very alien, and Echopraxia is a book that probably takes more than one read to appreciate how the story fully coalesces. Ubik by Philip K. Dick. Ubik is set in future 1992 Earth with some dip into the past of the 1930s. In this highly commercialized world, there's a huge industry for espionage and anti-espionage because people with psychic or telepathic powers will steal corporate secrets. Corporations hire other precogs and telepath negators to block the psychic espionage. In proper PKD fashion, these psychics are tested to measure their efficacy at blocking other psychics or shielding intellectual property. This definitely qualifies for placement on the mind-blowing list, but the mind-blowingness doesn't end there. Joe Chip works for one of these companies that employs these inertials, as they're called, the telepathy human antivirus folks. Joe, not an inertial, goes on a mission with a team of inertials to a lunar colony to investigate an assumed massive presence of highly powered telepaths. We're also introduced to inertial Pat Connolly, who's able to change reality and the past. We've got a corporate dominant world where you've got to pay to just open your apartment door. Telepaths and telepath negators, confusion over what is real or not real, and who is dead or not dead. That last part is tricky too. In Ubik, there's what's called the state of half-life. If you're frozen quickly enough after you die and before your brain loses the ability to function, you can extend your existence. Using the technology of this future 1992, these pseudo-deceased can be communicated with. PKD, as he often does, is tinkering in questions of morality for us to think about. Finally, I have to mention Ubik itself, the heavily advertised ubiquitous super spray when used as directed and only as directed is safe and can resolve any number of problems. It's not too difficult to read into this cure-all, a metaphor for religion and symbolism of the Christian God, and I'm really just scratching the surface mentioning this. The Thing Itself by Adam Roberts, published in 2015. The Thing Itself examines the Fermi paradox and first contact, the existence of time and space, and theories presented by philosopher Immanuel Kant. The novel begins in the Arctic North. Scientists Charles Gardner and Roy Cordius are attempting to answer the Fermi paradox. The idea that the universe is so massive, with so many star systems with planets capable of supporting life, suggests the likely existence of intelligent non-human life is contradicted by the fact that we've not found or met alien life or even signs of its existence. This is all highly philosophical and big ideas stuff for sure, but not necessarily mind-bending. The thing itself refers to Immanuel Kant's theory of transcendental realism. This is the stuff that bends your mind. Kant theorized that a thing, what it looks like, its shape, color, etc., the time in which it exists and the space it occupies, cannot be truly known to us because our perception of said thing is manifest through our senses, we are limited, we cannot truly know the thing in itself, do time and space even exist, or again, are these simply a design of our making? Adam Roberts spends the better part of the novel illustrating the idea to us and of course applies it to answering the Fermi paradox and bends our brain numerous times throughout. The Dark Forest by Xixin Lu. Because I talk so much about Xixin Lu's Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy on the channel, I'm gonna breeze through this one. In The Three-Body Problem, Lu introduces an astronomer working on the search for extraterrestrial life among the backdrop of the Cultural Revolution in China. The reader is presented with an alien race, the Trisolarans, via the construct of a virtual reality game in which avatars embodying famous scientific visionaries from Earth's past attempt to solve the repeating crisis that the aliens face on their home world. In the sequel, The Dark Forest, the pursuit of first real contact continues, and it's when the author explains the theory of the Dark Forest and applies it to meeting neighboring intelligent beings in the universe that the potential for a mind-bending experience occurs. Speaking for myself, 
I'll never again think the same way about the pursuit of first contact or the discovery of new worlds that could potentially host such life. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Leverts, and this is Fit to be Read.